Good morning, my darlings. Welcome to a brand new vlog. This is a very, very special vlog indeed. In fact, I think this vlog is my favorite vlog always. Every single year of the entire year, darlings, you know what day it is. Today is the first day of Vlogmas. <laughs> have actually seen that intro before I have because at the time of filming this video I have actually not seen it. Obviously I filmed it already, we had the most amazing fun afternoon. Fun fact, I was at least four glasses of rosé down filming that entire thing so hopefully it's okay and I'm not too bleary eyed um, but <sighs> I hope you love the Vlogmas intro for this year. For me, that's just like, you know you take Vlogmas seriously when you do a proper intro like that. Um, but darlings, as you can tell, I am fresh faced. I'm about to get in the gym, but I'm not going in until, uh, oh, there's a pheasant outside. This is so perfect. I'm not getting in the gym until um, Charlotte and her husband arrive. Charlotte is a local florist and she is coming to the house today, bright and early to start setting up our epic, literally the most epic, Christmas floral installations that you guys will ever see. We are not holding back this year. It is my 30th this year and obviously our first Christmas that we're able to have loads of people come and celebrate with us in the house. For Charlie and I, I'm sure you know from many of our other vlogs, we love to host and when we first bought this house, it was because we wanted to be able to have a house that we could spend so much time with friends and family, have this as a place where friends and family can always come and feel at home. And Christmas is just all about that for us. So because this is the first year that we're able to have the kind of Christmas that we wanna have here in the house, um, obviously we moved in in April 2020, but <laughs> COVID canceled Christmas last year. So yeah, there is no holding back this year. Charlotte is coming this morning with her husband because her husband is a joiner. Let's go to the entrance hall. They're literally gonna be here any second now. They're arriving, they're meant to arrive at eight o'clock this morning. This is going to be where the main structure is. I sent Charlotte an inspo image and basically because we don't have a mantelpiece, there's nothing for the florals to rest on. So her husband, who's a carpenter or joiner, has actually made an oak structure that the flowers are going to be supported on. And obviously we can keep that structure if we choose to do this in future years. So that's the one that I'm most excited about. We were going to have um, installed, you know, the, the, the lantern, I don't really know what you call it, this chandelier thingy, um, over the entrance hall table, but we've just not been able to install it yet. So the flowers that Charlotte has planned for that, I think we're gonna pop over the light in the kitchen. And then outside, I have always wanted to do something fabulous with this archway. Um, so we're going to do a really beautiful natural floral display over the arch. That is just gonna look so incredible and a great welcome for guests as they first arrive at the house. And then last but not least, we're going to do something really lovely and festive on the staircase. I did send some inspo images, but I'm not actually sure um, how this is going to look. I think I gave Charlotte a little bit more kind of creative freedom with this, so we shall see. We want to save a bit of the light. 
The ladies are here. They are currently getting the bits out of the van. They've brought so much amazing foliage with them from berries to hydrangeas. We've got some eucalyptus. Oh, so many beautiful bits. And they are starting with the archway outside the house, which is just going to look so beautiful. They're tying in a few similar bits to the wreath that's already on our door. So there's a little bit of continuity. Um, and I've asked for it to look quite wild and natural. Nothing in this house is too, too perfect. Um, so they're going to get a start on that while I do my... I think I'm going to muster up a 30 minute spin this morning. So obviously the girls have brought loads of foliage with them, but I did mention when we were WhatsApping, making the plans that we had loads of teasels growing around the bottom of the garden and on the lane. So I've just been down with my secateurs. This is part one, probably got about 10 times this amount to pick and bring up ready to put in the archway. Okay, the first little bit is on the archway and you can see down here all of the bits of foliage. So they've created these various piles of uh, different bits of foliage so we can see what's gonna go in each section, a mixture of different firs and eucalyptuses, bits of conifer in there as well, my teasels from the driveway. And then the beautiful bits over here, we've got the berries, hydrangeas, Lots more foliage over here, pine cones, some holly with some berries on. I'm not sure if this is for outside or for inside on the mantle. Our entire driveway is filled with foliage and some of these larger branches are going to be going in for the fireplace, which is just gonna look spectacular. I think this might be the main cross branch, which everything is gonna be attached to. Looking very festive indeed. I have showered post workout. I'm gonna to try to make myself look less asleep. <laughs> my eyes are seriously puffy at the moment. I need to use my Charlotte Tilbury frozen eye mask. Um, but yeah, my eyes are just ultra, ultra puffy at the moment. Um, I thought I would just catch you up on how Vlogmas is gonna run while I'm applying my makeup. I'm using the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit in the Universe shade. It's just absolutely gorgeous. I use the bronzer, I use a little bit of the highlight. I'm very lazy, so I'm just gonna use the same brush and the blusher, just a tiny little bit. On normal days when I'm not filming, I take two minutes on my makeup because that is all I can be bothered to spend by Terry VIP palette. So yes, Vlogmas 2021, very similar what I'm gonna do this year to what I did last year. I am going to be trying my hardest to vlog every single day in December up to Christmas, um, but obviously I'm not going to put too much pressure on myself if something happens that I can't vlog, or do you know what, sometimes you just wake up and you just, you're not in the mood and I always feel like if I try forcing a vlog on those days it always ends up being completely rubbish so if that is one day off then um don't worry <laughs> I'll be back keep an eye on my Instagram stories because I'll probably update you at like 505 if there was a missing vlog slot but I'll try my hardest I don't think I missed any last year did I I don't think I did even with the Stratford incident. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> do you guys remember that? Yeah, so I'm going to try and do a vlog every single day. They'll be up every day at 5pm and they might be a little bit shorter than the videos that I normally put out because because when you're filming every single day, obviously not every day do you have exciting stuff going on, but sometimes I enjoy watching when I'm obviously, I love watching other people's vlogmases. 
and sometimes it's those days when people aren't actually doing anything they're just like relaxing at home doing the boring stuff they're the ones that I love so I will be vlogging at the boring days as well but some of those vlogs might be short so not every vlog is going to be my usual kind of 40 minutes to an hour some of them might be, it depends how much we've got going on. You'll be pleased to know I do have some very, very fun things planned for December. I'm not going to give it away, but yeah, there's lots of fun things going on. Sorry, I could not talk and do my eye makeup at the same time, but I have used, as usual, my Bare Minerals Strength and Length Mascara, which is great for separating out the lashes, and it's serum infused, so hopefully good for your lashes as well. Sometimes when I wear a high roll neck like this. This is a lovely Holland Cooper roll neck. I feel that it makes my face look very round. <laughs> I'm not usually very good at contour, but I am gonna try a little bit of the Sculpt from this Charlotte Tilbury palette. I could really do with having an actual makeup lesson on how to actually properly apply makeup, seeing as I do put it on on YouTube, <laughs> seeing as I do share it in so many YouTube videos. And then I like to just finish with the bronzer from my by terry beach bomb palette because it's just great at giving your complexion a lovely glow <clears throat> a lovely glow i've popped on the charlotte tilbury pillow talk lip liner and then finishing with my by terry hyaluronic hydro balm in number one sexy nude i just love to wear these as a nice um, everyday lip base. So yeah, that is how vlogmas is going to work this year i hope that um is okay for you guys. Charlie and I are hosting Christmas at the house this year, which we're very, very excited about. I think we figured out we have 14 people coming over for Christmas, so it's gonna be great fun, which is one of the many reasons that we are getting the house decorated so beautifully. And we have got other Christmas events and Christmas drinks and celebrations going on throughout the month of December. But I don't but I don't think you should need an excuse to go wild with decorating if it's something that you fancy doing. We do actually um have almost like a test run today or this weekend rather because Charlie's mum dad, Nan and Dada, brother, sister and brother's girlfriend and my mum and brother are um are over this weekend. They are arriving in a few hours time. So now I'm gonna dash around and do the bits that we need to do to get the house ready, make sure the bedrooms look lovely, pop some, f I don't know if I can put any fresh flowers in. I might just go down the garden and see if I can muster anything up because I do like to put something fresh in the bedrooms. Um, and then what I like to do as well in preparation is lay the table for our dinner tonight. I think we are doing toad in the hole. <laughs> Sausage in the hole as Gino de Campo calls it. So I'll get the table ready and um, Let's also see how the florists are getting on. We have got a wooden structure currently being built inside our fireplace So it looks really subtle, but it's going to act as something that they can screw the main branch to it is quite the construction Really really exciting to see it in progress Oh, and I use the Dior Forever Natural Nude to begin with and the Clinique line smoothing concealer under my eyes. I will curl my hair a bit later before everyone arrives, um, but while it's still a bit damp in here, I don't like, I've said this before, but I don't like to fully dry my hair with a hair dryer because I feel like sometimes it frazzles it a little bit. Um, so I like to dry it to like 80, 90% and then I leave the rest to dry naturally. So while it's drying naturally, I'm just gonna quickly head into town. I've got a couple of errands to run um, and get some last minute bits from the shops. It's actually really, really cute. Something that Charlie's dad always does when guests are coming over to their house, to his mum and dad's house, is he always brings Viv, Charlie's mum, a bunch of flowers to have in the house to look beautiful when guests arrive. And Charlie does the same for me, which is so cute. So we have got this lovely bunch, which is from the florist at Soho Farmhouse. Just pop them in some water. I've not done a particularly good job at arranging them, but I'll sort that out when we get back from town after we've run our various errands. I have just popped a mince pie in the arger as my little, ooh, it's hot. Quick one for the road. So here's progress so far. You can see a really subtle frame has been put in just on the inside of our wooden panelling, 
which is perfect because then we can attach the branches to it to begin adding the foliage. Archway progress, most of the foliage is now in situ and Charlie has already said he wants to do something like this every season. Gosh, that's going to look insane. This is our local wine merchant. We're picking up some champagne for the upcoming celebrations. So what's the strategy? What are we going to get? 12 bottles of this bad boy. They've got 12, have they? Yeah. Epic. Yeah. So that will be for your birthday and then hopefully for Christmas and hopefully for New Year, but it might just be your birthday and Christmas. <laughs> It depends how much we drink. It depends how, how, I think the good thing with champagne is you can get a few bottles out and then move on to something a little less expensive. Good thinking. What is lovely, people for this is an English sparkling wine. Someone that doesn't drink alcohol, but I know that I have had this in the past. One. Yeah, it's a bit, I'd prefer it to night in, but. Oh, really? Oxford. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. A very nutritious lunch of sausage rolls from the butchers and crisps. I realised everything that I'm going to be eating today is beige, but never mind. Well, this evening we've got beige Yorkshire green pudding. Beans and cabbage. Okay, that's green. So I'll do buttery greens, covered in butter, <laughs> um, with the toad in the hole. Sausage in the hole. Sausage in the hole. <laughs> And I grabbed the latest Cotswold Live because apparently it's got a list of the Cotswold Christmas festive markets. So I will be adding those to my calendar. Okay, I've got my post-lunch oat milk latte in my little Christmas mug. How cute is this? Very impractical because it doesn't go in the washing machine or dishwasher rather, but it's worth the hand washing. Okay, so I've got a couple of bits to unbox i do know what's in here at least i think i do it feels a little bit bigger than i was expecting because when i placed my massive mince pie order a few days slash weeks ago i also ordered some fauna mason mince meat um, to make my own mince pies but unfortunately it was completely smashed when it arrived so hopefully this is a replacement of champagne. Oh my goodness. It says, happy birthday, Josie. Have a sparkling 30th. Who is this from? Oh, char. I've just, I opened this Fort of Mason up thinking it was the mincemeat, but it's from um, the Youngs and Davies. Happy 30th. Here's a little something to help you celebrate oh. with another little gift on the way too. So maybe the David Austin Rose them too. Oh wow. How well, you sweet need to is that? Look. Yeah, wow, that's I'll amazing. send them a little video right now. Yeah. Oh, what a treat. And that was me thinking it was boring old mincemeat. Yeah. How amazing. Obviously at the time of filming this vlog, my 30th has not yet happened. This is one of my pre-filmed because I wanted our festive decoration to happen within Vlogmas. <clears throat> Charlie is going to start lighting the fire behind me. Our first fire in here since we've had the tree up. And my next delivery is from Holland Cooper. Is there a different strategy when you're lighting an open fire to a charming um, stove? Not really. I just use slightly more kindling so that there's a bit more of a base. Ah. Ooh, silk pyjamas. This is the beautiful delivery from Holland Cooper. It is a pair of silk pajamas my goodness it's almost got that like it's kind of like um an italian scarf print look at that oh my gosh perfect pajamas to get cozy in on the first evening of vlogmas so darling seeing as this is the first vlogmas and we're going to be lighting a lot of fires throughout vlogmas yeah. i know we have done it on my channel before but for anyone that's new what are your top tips for lighting and or starting an open fire for an open fire. Well, is this an open fire? Yeah, an open yeah. fire. Uh, to be honest, it's, it is the exact same process as lighting a stove, mm -hmm. but I like to use a little bit more kindling when doing an open fire Yeah. because you don't have <coughs> the air 
flow that you have in the stove. Right. Which really, so with the stove, obviously, if you light it, you you light the um, Jenga, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you leave the door slightly cracked open, and then the vents open. You've got the airflow, which really helps it get going. Whereas in here, you don't have that. So it needs so to obviously draw. you can use bellows or things like that. Okay. But I would always use. I probably use four or five fire lighters just for safe measure. Oh, okay. Um, Does it need that many? Probably not. Probably not, but I just do. So, yeah, ultimately, it is exactly the same process. So, obviously, you get kindling. It's a cheeky little plug, but you obviously get the kindling and the fire lighters in Straw Top Cottage. But some Airbnbs, like when we went to Time, oh, they don't provide oh. kindling or fire lighters. They just provide logs. So, how would you do it? Even at the farmhouse? Actually, no, no. I think they do at the farmhouse, no, they don't provide, they? No, if you've just got logs, then it, you can do it, but it's a lot more hassle. Newspaper? Yeah, I mean, really, they should provide kindling. I don't know why they wouldn't. Yeah. Because um, this, particularly for an, as I say, for an open fire, you want lots of hot embers to get, you know, and it really depends on what you're using. Like, we're using kiln-dried wood, which is cut down locally from Walker's Logs, and at the moment, it's all um, ash. So a lot of people are like, tree. oh, you're burning stuff. But those that wood, if we didn't burn it, I don't know what it would be used for, because chips. It, the ash... Wood chips. Those ash trees have to be cut down because so they've got ash dieback. Yeah. So it is fairly. I'm not going to sit here and say it's the most sustainable thing ever. However, we try and get everything. What do you think is more sustainable, lighting a fire or having the heating in the house on? I mean, I reckon there's probably arguments on both sides. Yeah. Because we create energy in this country. A lot of the electricity is created in a non-clean way. Yeah. So this is the whole argument about electric cars, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but anyway, I think the key thing to What was the is, fact that someone said the other day, if you don't drive an electric car 120,000 miles... He said he didn't know if it was 100 century, but someone had told him, it was the guy from Land Rover, that if you... <laughs> Who order, obviously is very biased. <laughs> if you, yeah, an electric car, in order to justify its purchase, you have to drive 150,000 miles before you... Wow. But I don't know, I don't know. But the simple thing with this is, we don't use this open fire probably more than 10, 12 times a year at yeah. the moment. This isn't a very efficient way... That's why the stoves are brilliant because yes. they're very, um, they're sustainably built. They're made in the UK, Charmwood, in no way an ad, but mm -hmm. they're made in the UK, which is important, um, in the Isle of Wight. And they are a much more efficient way because what happens with that is you put a log on every couple of hours yeah. and it radiates the heat, yeah. doesn't it? And even like when they shot in the house recently, mm -hmm. the stove in our bedroom, it hadn't been lit for three hours and it was still warm. Roasting, yeah. Whereas this is a lot less efficient because a lot of the heat escapes up and out like this. Very true. Um, however, it is lovely and we are going to light this now. Put a bit more on. That is one heck of a Jenga. Yeah, get this nice and lit. It's the sound here, the ASMR. Nice. And you just leave that for a few minutes until it's roaring yeah, away. Yeah, I mean, look, you can do it a number of ways. You could even put wood on really soon. I like to get it nice and hot to start with. And then we'll put the wood on. But initially, you will get a bit of smoke initially because the chimney needs to heat up. Yeah. Once the chimney's heated up, the drawer is a lot better. Wonderful. Yeah. Well done, darling. So down here we have got some bits and bobs that we've had um, in the house for a few days to set up our new Sky Glass, which is very exciting. So the Sky TV is, um, well I'll tell you about it when it gets set up properly, but also we've got some last minute baubles which we found and I've just been threading up the ones that we got recently from Dalesford because annoyingly they don't come with any strings so I've just been using the twine from Caddo. So we're going to pop these last few on the tree while the fire gets going and then it should look absolutely perfect. We can see the progress of the arch from in here. They are still working on the base, the foliage, and then the pretty bits, the berries and the blooms come in a little bit later, but it really is looking so spectacular. They've built it to come out a little bit here so as to protect our little roses that are growing up. archway update we have started to get some berries coming in gosh it's looking even more festive and the full foliage arch is now in place we've got some gorgeous is it pine that's coming down by the lights yeah beautifully framing the lantern 
and there's still so many more beautiful bits to go in here and on the mantle as well. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it looks so good. Okay, well, I've just added some curls to my hair using the Dyson Coral and it is voluminous. Oh my goodness. I've been using shampoo and conditioner. I want to call the brand Jouet, but I don't think that's right. I'll pop it on the screen here. Um, shampoo and conditioner and I think my hair loves it. This is big hair, big hair, but it will fall um, before too long. And I've just put some Red Can Control Addict hairspray on. And I just also applied, where did I put it? Charlotte, ooh. Charlotte Tilbury lip, I think it's a gloss, in Can Trape, and it looks rather lovely. But I'm gonna keep my jumper and leggings on because now I'm going to get the table ready. Um, and also, finally, I've been putting this off for so long, finally put the plates up in the unit on the wall. Well, isn't this a festive sight? The fire crackling away by the tree. And up next, the ladies are going to start on the fireplace. I've put the ring light down, so I've got a little bit of extra light. It's only four o'clock, but it is almost pitch black outside. My next task before Charlie's parents arrive in the next hour is to make this table look beautiful. And I've grabbed a sack with the off cuttings from the archway. So I've got some foliage in here, which I'm gonna have a little rummage around and see if I can make something beautiful for the center of the table. This is as much as I'm going to do now before um, we start to get cooking. So I have got our bobbly plates from Dalesford as the kind of charger plates underneath. And to be honest, these are the ones we will eat our toad in the hole from. These ones from Burley are a little bit smaller, but they'll be perfect for when we're doing the dippy bread in the camembert. My Amazon napkins and my Amazon um, raffia ribbon really simple way of doing the napkins knife and fork obviously and then we have got some of the foliage chopped from the leftovers from the archway just spread across the middle there are a few areas where it's quite a, a blunt end i don't know if you can see under here and i've just disguised those with some little pine cones and we've got our candles throughout still using a few of our bits of wood some candles in plant pots chandeliers and then this little horseshoe thing here is actually a a great resting place for the hot pan that Charlie will bring in from the kitchen. Um, and what else? These glasses from the White Company. It is making me realize though that we are not gonna have quite enough of anything for the actual Christmas dinner. So I think I'm actually gonna research rental of crockery, but I bet everywhere is already booked up for Christmas day. But I think that's what I'll do a little bit of research for later on this evening. Just a little finishing touch. This is the L'Occitane 13 Desserts Spray and it is one of the most festive smelling room sprays I have ever experienced. So I'm just gonna give the room a little bit of a mist and also the kitchen because it stinks of camembert every time we open the fridge. Okay, done for now in the dining room and I'm just gonna prep the uh, baked camembert. So we're gonna do one as we usually do, just with rosemary inside. And then I found a recipe. This came up on my explore page. It's a, uh, a page called Damn Delicious. And it's basically a maple and pecan um, way of doing the baked camembert. So I thought it'd be nice for a change. It's not very practical to be watching a video when you've got family in the kitchen. So I'm just gonna watch it through and make some notes in my notebook on the other side of my mince pie chart. We need to update this. Charlie hasn't rated the large Dalesford yet. Or the M&S lattice. Gosh, and we don't even have Fortnum & Mason on here yet. <gasps> this definitely needs updating. 
Okay, so if you fancy making this brie at home, this is the recipe. So first of all, it's two tablespoons of brown sugar on the brie in the oven for 12 minutes, and then brown sugar, cinnamon and nutmeg, honey and maple, and some butter. This is all gonna go on the hob, melted down together. And then I'm gonna add half a cup of pecans and dried cranberries, and then that'll all go in the oven for a few more minutes, ready to, ready to bake and enjoy. <laughs> Okay, it's a few hours later. Charlie's family are now all here and Charlie has lit the candles in here and it looks so lovely. So the table is set, ready for dinner for our toad in the hole, which I'm absolutely ready for. I've also popped the plates in the unit back there, which looks really lovely. A few candles in there as well. And then Chef Charlie has been busying away. We have got sausage gravy. Where's the toad in the hole in the oven? In the oven. We have got ooh, steamed vegetables. We're gonna have mashed potato and it is smelling good. Oh my goodness, it's a few hours later. We've had dinner, we have had a lovely evening and I'm absolutely exhausted. So darlings, I'm gonna to try to remember to say goodnight to you every evening. I know I haven't shown you the finished floral displays. The girls are coming back in the morning to do the last little bits. And I'm gonna show you everything tomorrow in the daylight. So leaving you on a little bit of a cliffhanger, but darlings, I hope you enjoyed the first day of Vlogmas. I'm gonna take my makeup off and go to bed. <laughs> so thank you for watching, I will see you tomorrow for Vlogmas Day 2.